What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kinda Funny Games Daily for Thursday, February 20th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the OK Beast. Blessing. Eddie Oye Jr. What's up, Greg? I was very confused for a second because you kept, you kept saying 20 and I was like, yeah. is he going to keep going? Well, that was the thing. I was afraid I broke it for a second. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. It's a big day. You don't want to screw it up. Of course. All zeros and twos. You don't see that often. Exactly. And we won't see it again for a millennium. For another, yeah, for another cent- uh, cent- century. Millennium. millennium. Really? I don't know. Are you sure? <laughs> no, not sure at all. You know what I mean? But like that's how it goes. A century, it'll be what? 20, 21? There'll be a one in there. Or it'll be 21, yeah. 20. It is, it'll be all century is 100 years though, right? Yeah, that's right. That's the then that would yeah. be two thousand one hundred and twenty, February twentieth. Right, that would be I mean, another when you one of those. say it out loud. I yeah. say twenty twenty, so it'd be tw- it's in, when Greg's oh. great great grandkid says this. Right, it'll be twenty one twenty. He'll, he'll, he'll say point. February twentieth, twenty one twenty. You're absolutely right. And then so yeah, another millennia. Play, yeah, they'll wow. Play clip, they'll play this clip and be like, oh man, look, great grandpa. Once in know. a lifetime. Yeah, exactly. I I, I missed um. My car, the speedometer, or not speedometer, whatever. What's the what's, odometer? Odometer, the, I, yeah, 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 the, the one that keeps the track yeah, of your miles. Yeah, yeah. I just hit uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh wow! But yeah. You missed it. I missed it. It was today. Oh, that's yeah. Nice. I last time I was driving, I noticed that I was at like gotta remember. I this. was at like fifty four, and I was like, okay, two mi- two more miles. Sure. I'm gonna take a picture. Totally forgot about it until sure. just now. Did you at all think about just driving around the block until you figured you know, until it rolled over? You know. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I, uh, I'm not gonna be that guy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like, I why, is this, why is this guy circling my, my block? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get uh, somebody out there to arrest you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah you I'm not trying do to do that. that. How you doing? What have you been playing? What's happening? I mean, I've just been chilling. I've been playing some of that uh, Vanquish because uh-huh. I. Just Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Is it working? You're liking that. it? I'm enjoying it, yeah. Okay, good, it's, good, it's, good. I, I'm, I'm realizing that one of my favorite genres of games is Platinum. Just, I, just them. Just Platinum yeah, yeah, games. Yeah, Platinum games. Yeah, yeah they that makes make, sense. They, they know how to make combat systems, and so like I'm really digging that. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, I've just been chilling. Been watching uh, The Circle on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That weird, that's that weird dating show? No. no, it's not dating. It's a reality show. That oh, is, where you pretend to be somebody. What, where it's basically based on social media and being an influencer. Oh, okay. And so it's like eight people that are living in apartments, but none of them ever meet each other. Hmm. And their only interaction with each other is on this social media site that the show creators have, have made that is essentially called The Circle. And there are like different alerts that come up and it's like, all right, now you're going to rank all these profiles or whatever. And then now you're going to get to chat with people online. And you're essentially trying to gain goodwill with everybody else huh. and have like the best profile it's good it looked terrible when i watched this i really the like play. it i'm on episode two right now and i'm really i'm it. on episode four and i enjoyed the hell of it so it's far. so engaging like it's, i'm on the edge of my seat it's so well edited and it's just the the way the 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 people they have chosen some of them are so lovable and yeah. like you you're like fuck i want this guy to win 100 percent, or i want i this girl can't leave uh it's, yeah. ex- it's really, really Dude, exciting. By, I highly by, recommend by it. the end of, the ep- of episode one, uh, there was a character or a, a person because not really characters, but there was a there was a contestant. <laughs> there I was guess. a human being. There was a human being uh, that got essentially like a bad deal. And at the beginning of the show, I was like, I don't like this person. By the end of episode one, I was like, they didn't deserve what they got. They should have been treated better. I felt so bad. They got got. They got got. That sucks, man. You don't want anybody to got got, you know? You hate to see it. You hate to see it happen, but sometimes it does happen. And you might say, ladies and gentlemen, why are we talking about entertainment stuff on a game show? Because the world of entertainment and games are always crossing over. Whoa. We'll be talking today about Eli Roth directing the Borderlands movie. Animal Crossing is going to be dope. And Fortnite's been updated because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week to end a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You can give us your questions, comments, concerns, your squad up requests, and everything under the video game sun. Of course, on Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games, you can support us and get the show ad free along with an exclusive post show each and every day however if you want to watch live you can go to twitch.tv slash kind of funny games if you're watching live you have a special job go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and listening on podcast services around the globe housekeeping for you today congratulations to the 10 people who won Knights and bikes switch codes. All you had to do yesterday Woo! was retweet the Kind of Funny Games uh, daily tweet from it. Kind of Funny. You did it, huh? you bastard. They did it. They yeah. did it. Today I went through, DM you all, gave you your codes. Congratulations. Uh, ten of you won. Get in there. Check it out. Have some fun. Uh, today, reminder, housekeeping, we are starting the first full playthrough of 2020. Myself, 
and Tim Geddes will be playing Halo Combat oh, Evolved. My you excited? first time ever playing through Halo, the original Halo. Yeah. Are you nervous about it? No. I'm going to be awesome. It's going to be great. You excited? You know I mean? Plus, it's an old game, so it's going to yeah. be super simple. You're going to start it. There'll be like no textures. There'll be one thing there. Shoot. Boom. Then it's done. I is, it, is this one of the ones that you've been <laughs> dying to play one day, or is this just like one of those things Absolutely where it's like. Absolutely not. Okay. That's why I, mean, I figured. You know, I've come so far and I've never played it and I've never felt the need to. Yeah. You know I mean? No one ever's like, you know what? You know, it's a game you have to have played. It's Halo. Halo. And I'm like, well, I've played current Halo. So like, are you fine then? Yeah. And you, know you played I mean? Killzone. I, pl- I mean, come on now. Exactly. Killzone 2. The Killzone Mercenary. Killzone 3. Mm. Killzone Shadowfall. Killzone 1. I, those are games you have to play. Of course. Those are like, you know. Required I mean? reading. Okay. Exactly. Of games. You want to talk. You want to you understand the genealogy of first person shooters if you didn't get in there. Yeah, play Killzone, go to Killzone. Mercenary. Killzone yeah. and Resistance. Yeah, exactly. Oh, don't even get me started. You know what I mean? Retribution. Remember that? PSP. Great game. Um, Huh? Resistance Retribution? Yeah, that was a great game. Really? Grayson? That was I never a fun played one. it on, on Vita. It was on PSP. Right. Or PSP, sorry. Right. Come yeah. on now. Don't be screwing this up. It was a good first-person shooter on PSP. Was it was third person, right? Wasn't oh, it, was it? a big deal about it? Toss me up an image because I remember. Yeah, you had the coat. Remember, you had the cool leather coat with the Chimera skull on it. It was awesome. Uh, that was the Sony Bend one too. Oh, another great one. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it was. Uh, shout out to Attack Peter, a kind of funny best friend you know uh, very well. Of course, did the Portillo uh, Super Portillo shirt that is up there. We were looking for Resistance Retribution, <laughs> not Kills on liberation, liberation. But I appreciate Thanks, it, Kevin. Kevin. We're both sleep deprived. We've both been up talking about Animal Crossing all day long. I appreciate the, the swing and a miss on that I'm one. I'm sorry about that. No, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. Well, now it's that thing. Now, now I'm, I'm so tired. I want to. I'm right. Right. You're Third probably person, right, right. Yeah. Well, I could have. You're wrong. Yeah, there it is right there. I see everybody playing good. God, the first thing that pops up is my stupid IGN review. For kills <laughs> or for uh, resistance retribution. Yeah. Is this is, is this how your VO? What year was oh, this? Oh, it'll have my VO for sure. Everybody, it's Greg from the IGN PlayStation team, and I'm here to talk to you about Resistance Retribution. Because <laughs> you're Sony Ben, the same guys who do the Siphon Filter games on PSP. So they this is but this time they've been 2009. Okay. God, I sound terrible. First off, I mean. You don't sound too bad. It's just, well, it's just, there's no energy in my voice. Yeah. I don't think I know how to present, let alone that this would have been in the old days where they literally would walk, like, literally, you'd go into the IGN VO booth, mm. Craig Berdon or uh, uh, Nick sometimes, but, or Brendan would hit the button, and then they would sit back and go on their phones, and the, you would just talk. You didn't have a script. Have a script. That's why I'm like, hey, everybody, it's Greg from the PlayStation team. Let's talk about Resistance Retribution. No mm. notes. You just fucking talk for literally 30 minutes, and they cobble it down to a four-minute review. They hated that. That's hated that. Awesome. Retribution, though. Great game. Go back and play it, everybody. Uh, shout out to Attack Peter. Uh, I got a press release today. Uh, not about games necessarily, but like I said, Attack Peter, of course, did the, the Super Portillo shirt available at kindoffunny.com slash store right now, where we also restocked all the uh, kind of funny, or no, the PSI Love You XOXO sweatshirts, but they're going fast, so get over there. However, back to Attack Peter. I got this press release today. Skybound, of course, the people who make The Walking Dead has also partnered with Attack Peter, uh, a printmaking expert who has gained a dedicated fan following through his original designs and prints of pop culture icons. His handmade linoleum block prints have been commissioned by Marvel and Sideshow. Influenced by traditional imagery from Thailand and American uh, traditional tattoo flash, Attack Peter is partnered with Skybound for art on upcoming projects across comics, games, and more. Wow, that's awesome. Good job, Attack Peter. Yeah, congratulations. Very proud of you. That's what we're talking about, kind of funny best friends. We're also proud, of course, of our Patreon producers, James Davis, David Mindtel, Mind Free, Mind Free. Uh, Mohammed Mohammed, the nanobiologist, Frank Furter, uh, Blackjack, Patrick Higgins, Travis Gaikowski, Drew Garnier Frutis, Dominic Shorter, Ginny Burnt, uh, Joseph Solar, and Katie Gallagher. Today we're brought to you by Hymns and Quip, but I'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be. The Roper Report. Oh, so tired. He's a little tuckered out Kev dog. Four items on the Roper Report. It's bigger. It's done. Not only did Kevin get up early and come in and run the Animal Crossing stream, he got, what, an hour of sleep before the Animal Crossing stream? I just couldn't fall asleep. It was oh. terrible. Is it because all the coffee you drink? Or what do you think it is? It was because that is the, the cigarettes excitement you smoke? of Animal no. Crossing. No, was it the excitement I, for Animal Crossing? Yeah, that's, that was yeah. it. Sure. I walked Honestly, in the, the island building part, that got my interest. Right? That got my interest. Yeah, I, was, I, I walked in the office this morning, opened the door, forgetting that you guys did the Animal Crossing Direct. Yeah. And, like, like one, it was warm, which is a thing that usually doesn't happen in the morning. Yeah. And then also, like, I the first thing I see is a McDonald's bag. And I was like, oh, somebody just had McDonald's. I look and it is empty. And I look to the right and I just see Joey just passed out on the couch. And I'm like, wow, you guys had a party this morning. Yeah. Also, it awesome. wasn't yeah. empty. There's an orange juice and one more burger or sandwich in there. Oh. Free sandwich. I forgot if you want it. How was that sandwich? Like three hours now? It's fine. Four hours? It's fine. Yeah, it's a sausage it's- McMuffin. That ain't going to go bad. Mickey, D- Mickey D's is like the one thing that you can't preserve. 
What are you? Are you redi- what? I will. I refuse to have a Mickey D sandwich like past two hours. You're insane. Man. You're an insane. Are you kidding person. me? That, first off, it's Bless pure me. preservatives. Blessing. Just what so you know. Mean? Just so you know, like one of the first dates that I ever had with Paula, I had a Mickey D's <laughs> in my uh, McDouble in my pocket that I brought out that probably was in there for an hour and a half. It was oh. delicious. It was delicious. And now they're married. So there you go. You know what I mean? Put that sausage McMuffin in your pocket. Who, you, who knows who you're going to meet on the street tonight? <laughs> Number one on the Roper Report. It looks like Eli Roth is directing the Borderlands movie. Uh, Chris Priestman has a story over at PC Gamer. It looks like Gearbox's CEO, Randy Pitchford, has let loose some info on Borderlands movie a little too early. Last night, Pitchford revealed that Eli Roth is the film's director in a tweet that was quickly deleted. Fortunately, Kotaku was able to get an image of the tweet before it was pulled. I don't even need Kotaku's image because, one, Barrett Courtney got a screenshot of it that was retweeted by Fran Mirabella. So reading from that (laughs) screen grab, Randy Pitchford tweeted last night, I'm very excited to welcome Eli Roth as director of the Borderlands movie in development with Lionsgate and Arad Productions. Please welcome at Eli Roth to the team and be sure to catch the Gearbox official or the Gearbox panel main theater show at PAX East on uh, February 27th to learn more. Uh, Eli Roth this is back to the article here from Chris Eli Roth directed Cabin Fever and the Hostile Hostile films and he likes movies about hurting people in horrendous ways something he hangs out sometimes he hangs out with Quentin Tarantino his involvement suggests that the Borderlands movie will be uh, a bit on the gory side though possibly tempered by the series cartoon violence do we want this which part? The, a Borderlands movie, period. I mean, that's we, not, that's we don't have a good track with video, video game, game movies, movies, period, right? Within the last couple of years, we've had a few good ones. Sure, with Sonic. Sonic, Detective uh, Pikachu. Sure, I'm sure. sure there's one or two one or more two you're that forgetting. I'm yeah, forgetting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that said, I've never heard one person ever ask for a Borderlands movie. I've never even heard, heard people ask for a Borderlands TV show or like series. Well, Borderlands, not really... I think, is so uniquely borderlands yeah you know what i mean of where i think like you you get that itch filled by or a scratch i should say but uh, i'm i'm very tired too yeah. uh by the game right like i think that that world is so good at yeah being that world. like the game already has so much character like whether you li- you like mm-hmm. you know you vibe with the with the world and the vibes and the humor or not right like i feel like the tone and vibe of Borderlands is captured so well in the game through the lines, through the voice acting, through even like the presentation, the uh, cell shaded style of it, right? That stuff I feel like is difficult to capture in a movie. That yeah. said, right before the show, I asked uh, Kevin and Joey, like, hey, it, it, what movies has Eli Roth worked on? Like, is Eli Roth good? Apparently, Eli Roth is great. <laughs> Um, and I and you know they're saying here in the article that it's going to be on the gory side, or the movie will probably be on the gory uh, that's side. That's just by given, bringing in Eli yeah, Roth. Yeah, let the alone that Borderlands. It, it's very interesting when you think of a Borderlands movie, right? Because are they going to sell shade the movie? Are they going to give it that look? Because Borderlands is actually hyper violent with things exploding and yeah. blowing up and getting you know fucking going inside an animal. But it's like so done in a, a cartoony cell shaded way that it doesn't come off as like aggr- a, aggressively horrific right yeah it is you shoot people and their heads explode and pop like balloons and you're shooting like you know all sorts of alien creatures on the ground and they're doing that but like you don't think about it because it's that's yeah. the world is violence is not even violence if violence and guns are a currency in there right like they the world is legitimately set up in a way that you use the gun to solve the puzzles and everybody's like that's just how life works it's not like yeah. hey look at this dumb puzzle it's like all right here's your thing you gotta do this that and the other you're just gonna have to shoot stuff and that's okay. all that's i mean that's also why i don't really vibe with the idea of a borderlands of a movie. movie yeah, yeah. because like borderlands there's a story there but it's yeah. not really a story that i personally have cared about you know playing oh, you haven't been following the vault hunters and trying to get into the vaults every time and oh the yeah vaults and lilith <laughs> i and love the the vaults. Yeah. yeah but like that can they can they capture that in a movie in a way that's compelling and, and interesting yeah right and of course like in a borderlands movie they're gonna be going for fun they're gonna be going for action they're gonna be going for the laughs yeah but is there enough substance there to actually chew on and, and be engaged by that is going to be good yeah uh this is where it's interesting that we have the one and only host of the kind of funny screencast Kevin Coelho, big dog over there. Uh, big dog Kevin Coelho, number one, Eli Roth, yay or nay in your opinion? Do you enjoy an Eli Roth movie? Sometimes. He yeah. has a tendency to go real, real far. I was man, gonna say, per, my personal a thing is sociopath. Yeah, as, as not a movie person, really, mm. you know what I mean? Like, I enjoy a movie here and there. Like, Eli Roth movies, long ago, I was like, nope. Like, yeah. this is torture porn. I can't get into this. Oh, you know what I mean? Thing? Like, yeah, of course. Like, but, Hostile uh-huh. and that one where they were like on a, they were on an Kevin island. Fever. Is that Cabin Fever? No, I don't know, actually. Island. I'm onto that one. Keep going. Sorry. But you uh, think of... I, I was just going to say that, like, I... I th- 
I kind of feel like and hope a little bit that this is going to be a departure from that kind of stuff and that they're going to lean into the comedy aspect and the like hyper violence in that like they're shooting their enemies and they're going to be exploding and stuff like that. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. But for the most part, his movies are well structured and this is an interesting choice. Yeah. So film career on uh, Wikipedia, IMDb went down. So it's Cabin Fever, Hostel, Thanksgiving, uh, which is that one from Grindhouse. No. Yes. Kevin, do you remember that one? Hostile Part 2, Endangered Species, The Green Inferno. That's the one I'm thinking of. Death Wish, another one from Grindhouse. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, I, en- I enjoyed Grindhouse. Uh, what, what do they call that when the Tarantino bundled them together? Was that a double feature? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Death Wish I, en- I, en- I did enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Borderlands seem like it could be one of those? Like, does that seem like it translates well to what Borderlands is? Having, for me, having not, like, seen any of these movies. I think the fact that he worked with Tarantino on Double Feature, and I'm not wrong about that, right, Kev? Because, yeah, okay, cool. Well, uh, I mean, there were two movies. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, but I think, like, that one in, in Death Wish was that one, right? Because when I click on Death Wish here and the thing, it's like, death, 2018 remake of the film Death Wish opened to 13 at the bu- That's not what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of the one with Kurt Russell, right? Death Drive, is that what I'm thinking of? Any, can you help me at all with any of this Double Feature <laughs> shit? Uh, the Double Feature was, uh, was Death Wish and Grindhouse. Okay. Yeah, Death Drive was a different movie. It w- and the heat. Okay, so hold on. In 2007, Roth directed and narrated the faux trailer for Thanksgiving for Grindhouse, as well as appearing in Death Proof. So he had nothing to do with that. Tarantino's second of the film. I gotcha. Hmm. Yeah. I'm not a movie Death guy, Proof. so that's all I can say to that. Uh, so th- everything I just said about Death Wish throw out, oh, I don't know anything saying, about yeah, it. Yeah, they're saying Planet Terror is the double feature. Thank you. Thank you. That's and the other thing I was talking about. nothing to do with that. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> that's where I'm confused. So what then? Yeah. Yeah, then I, I guess when I look at this thing, I've never enjoyed an Eli Roth movie. <laughs> but I think that's personal, uh, personal uh, opinion, Taste. right? Like, yeah. I just don't like torture porn. I don't like things getting torn apart and good people getting tortured. Like, and I, that's the thing is I did watch. I watched the trailer for that Green Inferno, right? And then I was like, meh. And then it was on something. And I was like, well, I'll just, I'm like, no. Like, this is horrible. These poor people. Mm. I mean, you know when I, mean? I think of Borderlands, right, I do think of senseless violence and like good people being tortured and all that stuff but i also think of do you that's I, what you come to well i mean senseless not mainly. violence of course yes yeah yeah I mean, I mean good people being tortured maybe throw under that as a bullet point but like that's not the first thing i think of right i think the first thing i think of is the the goofy yeah fun world and characters and then like right under that it is like oh yeah post-apocalyptic space cowboys just killing each other nonstop, and so i i I guess, like, the Eli Roth vibe could translate somewhat, but is it enough to actually make a good Borderlands movie? And I don't even know what a good Borderlands movie even looks like. And that's the thing, too, is that, yeah, it's what's going to balance that out is, like, Eli Roth definitely knows how to make blood and gore and all that jazz, yeah. right? But you need to balance it out with comedy to where that's not what I think most people think of when they think of Borderlands. Mm-hmm. It's got to be funny. It's going to have to be this post-apocalyptic Mad Max world. Yeah. And then from there, where does it go? Yeah, it almost reminds me of I, a while ago we had a conversation about Destiny and if Destiny can make a good TV show, yeah. right, or a good Netflix series, and basing that off of like how The Witcher did, right? And I think we all we kind of had different arguments from you know the standpoint of Witcher has a story, and Witcher uh, you can adapt the story of Geralt and make that a thing, right? And for me, like I think you can make a Destiny a good Destiny show because Destiny you just have to make a show that takes place in the world of Destiny. Right, that's kind of how I look at it, and you don't have to necessarily follow a main character or a main plot line. You can just uh, exist in that world and tell good stories in that world. Mm. Whereas Borderlands kind of does have a story, right? Like it, Borderlands has characters, like it has consistent characters being like the four main vault hunters in each game, you know, four or more with the DLC ones. But well, I mean, even beyond that, right? The yeah. vault hunters change every time, but that's it, it's yeah. the idea that. Lilith and the Crimson Raiders and, and Vaughn, well, I guess that's from Tales of Borderlands, but it's now in Borderlands 3, right? You do have this, and then the, you know, Brick and the other Vault Hunters that were yeah. in the games become the side characters, right? And Tiny Teen and all this, like... like the, there, there's Royal, a consistent Roland. story and consistent characters there that maybe you don't have to touch on. Maybe you could just tell a story in the world of Borderlands, 
and maybe that could work. There but, was a rumor. Uh, that's the thing is like, obviously mm-hmm. the Borderlands uh, movie's been gestating for a while and being kicked around for a while, right? There was a rumor going around that yeah, the main character was going to be a female. Uh, there was also yeah, here it is, uh, June twelfth, twenty nineteen. FullCircleCinema.com says Lion Gates Borderlands film will feature a female protagonist. Uh, get ready, Vault Hunters. The video game adaptation you've been waiting for is one step closer to reality. Full Circle has exclusively learned who will lead the Borderlands film for Lionsgate, as well as make up the supporting characters. Although the upcoming project will pull straight from the source material, it will have a different lead character. A legendary thief named Lilith will be the protagonist in a new story that will include instantly recognizable faces, like the fan favorite Claptrap. The movie will find Lilith and the Atlas Corporation space prison, where CEO where the CEO gives her the chance to earn her freedom by rescuing his daughter, the foul-mouthed Tiny Tina, on the planet of Pandora. The mission takes an unexpected turn when it becomes clear that the little girl is key to unlocking a valu- valuable alien vault that Atlas wants all for itself. Of course, this is full circle. This is 2019 June. Mm-hmm. How much of that is real? How much of that is fake? I've been struggling here with myself personally. Of course, you know we've done stuff with we do the Borderlands show. Of course, full transparency. Not that that's made me an Eli Roth fan <laughs> at all or anything to that effect. But when we Fran and I hosted the Borderlands launch event, we had uh, Randy and uh, I think it was Avi Arad right from Arad Productions on to talk about it. And I thought they they announced who the writer was. But I haven't been able to find any news stories about that. So I don't know if I'm misremembering that or if that did happen. Because I thought it was somebody... I have no idea. Yeah, well, I know, and it's such... Again, for this movie that got announced so long ago, it's like mm-hmm. the Uncharted movie, where even this story, where it, 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 this story, right, of Eli Roth's attached in a tweet that got deleted. So you assume that's getting announced at PAX. You assume mm-hmm. there was a miscommunication. You assume Randy tweeted something he wasn't supposed to tweet. Yeah. Still, even then, it's like, do you how thi- many directors have been attached to the Uncharted movie? Do you think this is happening at PAX for sure? Yeah, I mean that's I mean like mm-hmm. uh, Gearbox prides themselves on hey they, they do love PAX East. when we do PAX pa- PAX in general when they do a PAX panel they try to go big and they try to have it like be an hour long stage show of yeah. like there are different things everything matters that we already know that's where they're revealing B- DLC two for Borderlands three like their big expansion like it's going to be a big thing and again I know for a fact I interviewed uh, Mr. Arad and Randy at uh, this Borderlands launch event so it does look like. This is a real movie that is getting closer and closer yeah. to being made. My thing is, why did the tweet get deleted? Because I, I assume this was a, probably a scheduled tweet. This was probably set to be announced at this time, and then they pushed it, or something happened where they were like, actually, let's not announce, but the tweet was probably still scheduled and mm-hmm. went out, and mm-hmm. they deleted it. That's yeah. how I picture it happening. Totally. Yeah, it's not, I don't think Randy sat there and wrote the whole thing. Yeah, and it was no, like, no, no, oh, no. I didn't realize. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that happened. Could have been, though. You never it's, know. Yeah. You'd be surprised how many, I mean, like... Twitter's Twitter. Randy Pitchford doing something crazy. Yeah, Randy <laughs> Pitchford doing something <laughs> crazy on writer. Twitter. Oh my god, outrageous! I can't yeah. believe it. That said, like, then that's why I kind of have the thought of, well, are they? Did they pull out of packs? You know, I mean, PlayStation recently pulled out of packs, no. citing coronavirus. I, I met. Well, actually, I'm not even gonna assume anything, right? Could coronavirus or some or some sort of mishap or some sort of second thought kind of thing make them pull out of Pax East? I mean, obviously, it could. I don't think it would. No? You know what I mean? I think, again, for... And I understand... I guess it's not the exact same thing because I'm about to say, for as much as they've been promoting PAX East, saying, even throw, throw this part of it away, that this is where we'll reveal DLC 2 for Borderlands uh, 3, where we're going to do all these different announcements, right? I feel like that's too big of a thing to s- promise everybody mm-hmm. and then pull back on. Now, granted, you can make the argument, well, people are going to get to play Last of Us Part 2 for the first time. That's pretty huge, and yeah. it is. Um I just don't think, you know, again, for what, how, for the way I, from being backstage and having, or been on it, what, two different Borderlands or Gearbox panels at PAXs throughout the years, and the way I've seen them and the way I know that they look to these to be like big moments and milestones for them mm. and for their audience too, I don't think they'd pull out of it. I think literally it would have to be like, coronavirus is here. <laughs> Boston's <laughs> been infected. Everybody, if you, go to, if you go to PAX, you might not come back. I think it would need to get to that part of uh-huh. it, right? Yeah. No, hold on, no, hold on. Nanobiologist says, regarding the writer of Borderlands movie, take quote, taking over from G.I. Joe's G.I. Joe 3's Aaron Berg, oh. the amazing Spider-Man 2's Avi Arad oh, will man. oversee the movie with a script from Cloverfield Paradoxes. Cloverfield Paradox Berg. was the Netflix one, right? Yes. No, this All is right. hold on, he's saying this is what because that's not the best. That's, that's not the best one. That's not yeah, the yeah, best when you're well, saying, yeah. That's not the best track record <laughs> over all those movies mm-hmm. that you just listed. Hold on. When did this this went up? April 17th, 2018. Here's what I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, 
and mainly nanobiologists because you'll be able to go fact check and do all this stuff. I see what you're saying. I'm hung up on, I could have sworn whoever got announced at this thing that perhaps I dreamed, not the interview because I did interview them, mm -hmm. but I thought it was somebody who had some connection to the, the recently uh, done Chernobyl thing. Was there another Chernobyl guy who's doing video game stuff recently? Am I getting confused with that? I have no that? idea what you're talking about. It's one of those things I like to think I know video games so well. Mm -hmm. As soon as you involve any form of yeah. TV or movie, movie or, with it, I'm yeah. like, they all run together. I have no idea who you're talking about. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know, everybody. We'll figure this out. I would like to see like a Edgar Wright Borderlands movie. I feel like the, I don't I don't know if he'd nail the, the world, but I feel like he could nail the tone and like the with his pacing. And that's the thing when you look at it, right? Like I think again, Eli Roth has the violence down. In the action yeah. side of it, down right, but does he have the comedy? And Edgar Wright one makes so much sense. Yeah. right? sense, right? I don't know anymore. Maybe they join anymore, forces. Boston. Maybe they do. Maybe Edgar and do. Eli Roth. That 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 is <laughs> that would course. be a tag team. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep you updated on all this as it goes. Look for this Pax East announcement that is now announced already. Uh, number two on the Roper Report comes from Kotaku. Uh, over there, Riley McLeod writes, Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2 has launched, and we have the details. Whoa. After a long Season 1, Fortnite's Season 2 is here. Without patch notes, players are still piecing, together piecing the changes together, but there are new areas on the map with NPCs to battle, some new items, and new ways to customize your skins. Season 2 is called Top Secret, and it's spy-themed. Lore-wise, there are two factions, Ghost and Shadow, who are fighting. The Battle Pass menu has changed and is now styled like a secret agent hideout, which oh. I found a little confusing at first, but adds a fun new layer of scrolling through challenges and Battle Pass rewards. It's all a lot of lore stuff, but there are also faction-specific options for your Battle Pass skins. Uh, we'll see how it affects the game as the season goes on. Epic writes that there will be limited time operations in spy games, so perhaps this faction warfare will, also, will mean more than just outfits. Kevin? Can I bother you to Google real quick? I, I watched it earlier today. They put out a Battle Pass trailer. Yeah. If you put up Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 2 Battle Pass trailer and let that play. It'll so probably have like Top Secret in the name or something. Kevin immediately started laughing as I gave him all that information. I think it might have been too much to throw at his sleep-deprived brain. Hold on. Fortnite. Okay, okay, good. I will continue on with the article then. As players suspected, there are changes to the map. Certain areas, such as the island, uh, and a new area outside Slurpee Swamp, and now bases that feature NPC henchmen, along with turrets and cameras. We've seen NPCs in, this, in the game before, uh, most recently during the Star Wars event. These henchmen put up a good fight, and once you down them, you can give them a shakedown to get what seem to be temporary special abilities, like the ability to see where chests are and other NPC enemies in the map. Uh, in one of my games, I watched a teammate get a key card, which unlocked an Apex Legends style vault with loot and a gold XP coin. It was a bit busy to deal with the NPCs while also keeping an eye out for enemy players, but these areas were a lot of fun. There are also a ton of changes to the battle pass. Certain characters, called agents, have challenges for which the player can pick ghost or shadow missions. What's going on, Kev? Yeah, you can toss it up anytime. I'm sorry, I want it like, for B-roll. It's okay. Uh, which appear to unlock permanent faction-specific bonus outfits. One character, Maya, gets her own menu where you can mix and match options like clothing, face paint, and tattoos by completing specific weekly challenges. Some Battle Pass characters also have unique features. Level 100, Mi Mi I'm sorry, level 100 Midas skin can turn weapons and vehicles gold for the duration of a match, while other skins have built-in emotes or rideable gliders. These qualities appear to be more cosmetic. Event in the Battle Pass screen leads to a hideout that features the superhero-specific uh, weekly challenges. Let's try that again. Event in the, the Battle Pass screen leads to a hideout that features superhero Deadpool-specific weekly challenges. Deadpool appears at the end of the Battle Pass trailer, so presumably he's a unique skin. Huh? You said he was in the middle? He was in the middle. I just There was a little... That's a banana, Kevin. That's a banana. That's not Deadpool. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Silly. Oh! oh hey. Hey. Wow, yeah. I watched the trailer earlier. I didn't notice the Watch Deadpool. It. If you want... So now, you did a great job getting this up, Kevin. I know what a banana is! <laughs> Thank you for getting this up, Kevin. If you click in the document, you see the Battle Pass trailer I wanted to th show. Oh. You can click that one up there. Blessing said top secret. Sorry, it's okay. I, I, thought that, I thought that was what you We're all about. here. We're all f here for each other doing our thing. I, I like this theme. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not, I haven't played Fortnite in a while. Like, I got uh, super into it when it came to Switch, yep. and I spent, like, that whole... I think that was, what, 2018? Yeah, I believe that was 2018. Yes. Uh, 2018 was, like, my year of Fortnite, oh, and then God. I kind of fell off. That is creepy. That's not normal. We're looking at Meowsles. Yeah, it's like a... Uh, it's muscular a, cat. 
a cat with muscles. That guy looks like a Very Borderlands character. And then you have Maya, who I'm pretty sure is also the name of a Borderlands character. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so do you think you're going to turn this one on to try any of this? Possibly, honestly. Like, it looks cool. It looks fun. Uh, it, seem, it seems more unique than a lot of their other seasons that they've had, right? Because, like, they did, like, what, a season of superheroes and, like... Chapter two was basically just like a reboot. Yeah, chapter two was yeah. yeah four and this going like very specifically like, hey, we are <laughs> we're going for like the super spy agent vibes. I I dig it. I'll give it a try. I don't know if I'll stick with it, but I'll I'll try it out. Kevin, can we bring up the shock mic? Because one Joey Noel has entered the foray. Someone who played that Fortnite. person was named T N Tina, like yeah. Tiny Tina. Sure, but like T N T, like T, you know, like a bomb. Okay, you know what I mean, Not Tiny like- Tina also like, loves bombs. It's true. No, she likes making them pizza pockets. I'm saying there's a lot of Borderlands out in a lot. Hey, of remember they there. teamed up and had the whole uh, they psycho did, yeah. crossover and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joey Noel, what's your read here on season two? I'm really excited. Chapter two. Are you I coming back fun. too? Yeah. I, How much did you play a chapter or chapter two in general? Season one. Um, I didn't. No, no, I, season two. Chapter one. Yeah. There is we that go. right? Is that what we're yeah. doing? No, <laughs> chap, chap, Fortnite chap, chapter two. Is chapter the, two, season one. Uh, whatever. Yeah. The last update. <laughs> the last season. Um, I got to like level 45. So I played Not like bad. a decent amount. Okay. But like the season went on forever. I definitely dropped out for like probably eight to 10 weeks in the middle of it. Yeah. But I played like last week. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I think it's fun that you get to pick like your different side of it. Um, I was watching a stream earlier and it looks like there's some chests or like hideouts that you can only access if you're a certain um, team. Okay. Or you can like carry, if you down an enemy, you can carry them now, which was a new update as of the last season. And then you can carry them to grant access into it if you're on the other team. Lots of interesting kind of things with all the stuff. I think it's going to be really fun. I'm excited. I'm hoping that um, it's just kind of like a shot in the arm because the last season felt like it went on forever and then it got kind of boring. Mm. So we'll see. Are you going to come back? Uh, yeah, 100%. I think I'm playing tonight. No, look at you. Mm-hmm. Follow around yeah. on Twitch.tv. Trying to team up, Joey? Uh, I might have a full squad. Oh, wow. 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 Listen, you none of you people played wow. last season. I had to find people to play with. It's true. I haven't played it since the whole thing, yeah. the whole reboot. I was playing before then, but yeah, no. I'm hurt, Joey. I'm hurt. Barrett's going to want to play. If we have a spot open up, I'll let you know. How about that? Is Barrett part of your squad? Or no. Is, okay. But Barrett, I assume Barrett's going to want to jump in. Number three on the I'm Roper hurt. Report. We had an Animal Crossing New Horizons Direct this morning. Uh, you can, of course, watch our live reactions. It was myself, Joey Noel, and yes, Gary Witta actually came to the office at 6 a.m., to watch Animal Crossing direct with us. Uh, the reacts and the little post show is up right now. YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. You weren't on camera, Kevin, and everyone knows you were here. We've already talked about it several times. All right? We've talked about how tired you are. You were talking about little Kev dog. All right? Kevin, do you want a hug? Come over. Get your hug from Bless. We'll wait. Show will continue after this hug happens. Remember, patreon.com slash kind of funny games if you want to ask questions. There it is. Look at him. He's so strong. He is very strong, I know. Also, you weigh about what? 75 pounds. <laughs> 30 pounds and a half. <laughs> uh, here are some bullet points from what we I thought was impressive. Joey, uh, you can, of course, jump in and add in anything you want to it. Uh, when you start this one, you're going to be able to choose the island layout you want and what hemisphere you're in, thus dictating the weather for where you are. Uh, eight players can share one island and play on the same Switch, obviously. Uh, Nook Link will be a Q, uh, Switch online cell phone app, right? So it's like... You're using your the Nintendo Switch online app, right, to go in there and you can scan QR codes to get outfits and designs you've made in the other games, like the DS one and then uh, the other one that's escaping me right now. Pocket Camp? Was it Pocket Camp? No, you can't no. design stuff, right? Doesn't matter. Uh, oh, no. Uh, Happy, Happy home, home Designer. Happy Home Designer. Uh, and then you can terraform the island, which is the biggest deal, I think, the in the coolest. whole fucking thing, right? Because my th- whole take on it, Bless, mm-hmm. was that I was getting dropped on this island and making my little campsite and all this other stuff. I was like, yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm going to miss the towns, right? No, this one, the town obviously evolving. You're getting your muse- museum. The sisters are back building their shop. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you can go through and build more land, you know, like actually make blocks of land into the water to make your your island bigger. You mm-hmm. can then change like the flow of rivers. They showed, a, uh, you know, an elevated pond up here that they basically Minecraft pickaxe to that then caused the water to come down. So they oh. can you can build bridges. You can lay out your oh. concrete pathways and stuff. You can make it into a real town, which is it's a game. Really that cool. sounds awesome, actually. Yeah. That might be the thing that might sell me on this game because that reminds me of like 
Have you, did you guys ever play Dark Cloud on PS2? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like that reminds me of like the town building in Dark yeah, Cloud. Yeah, totally. Organize that. Um, a whole bunch of different uh, changes, updates, new things in there. Uh, one of the ones that's getting spread around the most was the save data information, however, though. Uh, th this is from Nintendo themselves. This game does not support the save data cloud functionality of Nintendo Switch Online. However, the ability to recover Animal Crossing New Horizons save data from the server in the event of console failure, loss, or theft will be available to Nintendo Switch Online members later this year. This game does not currently support the ability to transfer your save file from one Nintendo Switch console to another. However, a function specific to Animal Crossing New Horizon to, Horizons to move users and save data to another console is planned for later this year. That seems to be the only piece of really bad news there, including the fact that this, hey, if anything happens to your Switch and you, you, we're going to be able to do something, that's a one-time use thing that other people are talking about. But, Joey Noel, Yes. Animal Crossing expert, what was yes. your take on the Direct? This was like a best case scenario Direct for me. It was everything I wanted. Had cool music the whole time. We got to see all the seasons. Got to see some of our favorite villagers to see who comes back. Got to see some sneak peeks at some new villagers, which yeah. I'm always excited about. Who's your some who, what's your favorite villager that came back? <sighs> I really like Marshall. He's like the grumpy little squirrel guy. Oh. And he's very fun. Um, I also like Goldie, who's a dog. Uh, she's pretty much like a golden retriever. I don't know why I asked. Like, I wouldn't know who they are. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Somebody um, knows who they are. Yeah. I also, I like, I like a lot of them. I don't know, Fauna. She's a cute little deer girl. Do you have any ones, like any new ones that you're looking forward to? Um, there's this one that's a cat that has really sparkly eyes, and she looks like super color. bright color. I know, right? Sparkles. Um, yeah, all the terraforming stuff is really <laughs> cool. <laughs> Um, I want to, I don't know. It just makes it nice. So like, yeah, you do have the options of like the four layouts, but I feel like everybody's because of this is going to kind of look pretty drastically different. And that's the, the coolest thing about it. Yeah. As much as I love Animal Crossing, right? Like I, I, granted, you're number one fan in the office. I'm not trying to take <laughs> your title or anything, I love, but I love Animal Crossing and yeah. have played all of them, right? Uh, the core ones. Um, Looking at this, I'm in the same boat as you. Where like, you know, Tim came in, he's like, you know, you know, I don't care, but like, this looks like Animal Crossing of Dreams, right? And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> like, it is. Hey, here's all this stuff. Here's you know all these new outfits. Uh, we, I, it's worth watching the direct uh, with us just to hear us all simultaneously go, ooh, <laughs> like when you when they selected multiple items on the wall and grouped them together and then moved the group when they're designing their house. We we're all yeah. like, yeah, hell yeah, that's this awesome. Is part of it right here. You know what I mean? I'm all about this life. Yeah, it seems kind of like some. Like the evolved version of Animal Crossing that has like some Stardew elements, but also like some Sims elements of like a little bit and none more of them design getting, stuff. At least from this first glance, right? None of them getting so deep yeah. as to be off-putting, right? It, For like, sure. it seems like all of it's going to be as basic as everything is in Animal Crossing. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. Blessing you should play. I'll think about it. Like I've always <laughs> wanted to get into Animal Crossing. I've just never had mm -hmm. the opportunity. This seems like it's going to be a pretty great one. I'll try. They have really cute. Snow it comes out the same day as Doom, though, and like no, it sucks. So for Doom. here's the thing: I feel like Doom is like Animal Crossing is one that you just play. You keep on playing, for a, like a little, yeah. not a little bit, but you play a bit every day. Mm -hmm. Remember, yeah, because Animal Crossing is there. It's all time, not all of it, but the many yeah. things are timed, right? You plant a tree or whatever, it doesn't grow immediately. You have to wait. Time. Yeah, <laughs> you have to wait for shops to open and yeah. all that yeah. kind of stuff. Doom so is like, like one and done. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna finish that. In like well, no, not even that. Two We're days. just saying that like Doom or Animal Crossing is like a. Like a constant yeah, thing that you yeah. can only do for a certain amount like of time. I'm not going to sit yeah. down the whole day. Yeah, exactly, Crossing. exactly. So you could just power through Doom and then be all set just for this. Just live in Animal Crossing. Yeah. You don't have anything else to play. You're fine. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> 2038 Pokemon CEO writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games with an Animal Crossing question and says, guys, does the lack of cloud save support for Animal Crossing make you nervous? According to the fine print, you get one save backup and it's and it is only if you lo lose or break your switch. At some point, you will. S at some point, you will update your switch. Uh, are you prepared to lose your Animal Crossing save, <laughs> or is this not as big of a deal as it seems? Same goes for everybody in the room. Is that not like a weird? Th I, I imagine they do it Super so that you're, you're not um, cheating and gaming. The yeah, system. Gaming we the talked system. about this earlier. Like for me personally, like I get that. That is stupid. Like it's mm -hmm. like it, Animal Crossing's always been the game of if you fuck with your clock or you know you quit yeah. before you like the, you know, the game comes in and chastises you for doing yeah, that. Yeah, like it you. knows you're up to something. But in this thing of like, I don't even know. I guess I'm sending. I'd be sending my save to somebody else to do stuff while I'm at work or whatever the fuck or to, you know. But I don't even. Who cares? It's a single player game. And that's like defeats the point. Of if it. you want, if you're, if you want to go break the entire experience of Animal Crossing and that's how you're gonna enjoy the game. All right. 
mm-hmm. go for it, I guess. I don't I don't understand why you would do that or whatever, but it also doesn't affect my enjoyment of it all. And I think it actually hinders people's enjoyment because it is that concern of like, for as complicated as this is, right? This game does not support saved cloud, uh, saved data cloud functionality of Nintendo Switch Online. However, the ability to recover Animal Crossing New Horizons saved data from the server in the event of a console failure, loss, or theft will be available to Nintendo Switch Online members later this year. For a one-time thing, right? uh, This game does not currently support the ability to transfer your save file from one Nintendo Switch console to another. However, a function specific to Animal Crossing to use to to save data to another console is planned for later this year. It's like, what are you doing? Why is it this complicated? Like, I thought the whole point of Nintendo Switch Online was to be able to do this. And I know they said from the beginning not every game would support it. But come on. It's fucking Animal Crossing. Yeah. Especially because it's a game that, like, is so ongoing. You think that you'd want to support cloud because... You'd want your player base to play this for a long time and not have to deal with all of this bullshit. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's the whole thing of like, you know, am I nervous about it? No. I think it's dumb. I think it's tone deaf for the moment. They're clearly working on stuff they say will be out later this year. Yes, that is going to fuck over some people. You know, I I hope it isn't me that I play a whole bunch of this for a month and a half and then my switch gets stolen or broken or whatever and I am effed. But they're working on it. Okay. I don't know why it's so complicated. I don't know why it's got to be like this, but yeah, I guess I, I, on t- out of all the news we got today, that's like, oh, that's lame, but I'm not like furious no. about yeah. it. Yeah. It's not going to stop me from playing it. 100%. And yeah. it is nice that they're figuring out whatever functionality it is for inevitably when I upgrade my switch and I want it or whatever, like you will have a way that you're not stuck on this one console forever. Yeah. Hopefully. And that's the thing is like, knows. from what I understand, and has anybody in this room updated their switch or switched over the switch, right? Mm-hmm. You have Barrett? So you'd be able to transfer your stuff, right? Because you transfer all your stuff from your Nintendo Switch. So if, I, if tomorrow I went out and bought a Switch, let's say m- March 21st. Yeah, March okay. 21st, I've already played Animal Crossing. Yeah. I transfer my entire Switch brain to the new Switch. Mm. That would still bring my save, correct? For this Animal Crossing thing? I don't know. It's a different situation, so I'm not too sure. Um, the game does not support save data cloud functionality. So that's already off the... The game does not currently support the ability to transfer your save. Oh, so no. That's, yeah, that's yeah that sounds difference. like a no. So yeah. even there, that's fucked. Yeah. But in the future. But in the future, but still, like, oh, come on. This is what you guys get for playing this on day one and not Doom. You can play yeah, both, though. We just discussed it. We can play both. Yeah, we said we're going to play both, you dummy. Get out of here with your stupid cool And hat. they're so different. Have you also guys seen the all the fan art? From both of these communities, oh on the yeah, them hanging out together. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, is, no, 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 it's no. adorable so and hardcore. At the yeah, same and Pete time. Hines is tweeting about it too. Like everybody's in on it. They're they're having fun. Yeah, you know it's what gonna I mean? be a great day. Yeah, exactly. What a great day for video games. Except that we have still to do GDC. And the Half Life, Alex comes out at a certain point. Yeah, I think that yeah, week. The next week. And then it? we have eleven days until Persona comes out. After that. You know, and then it, Resident Evil Three. <laughs> it rains and when it rains, it pours. You know what I mean? We're in a drought right now. Nothing to play. <laughs> You know what I mean? Except dreams. Blood Roots is coming out. Then we're going to roll around Alex in games comes out in three days later. Yep. That's wild. That's a wild week. It's wild and crazy, kids. Do we have something that can play Half-Life Alex in this office? We have, the, we have the Quest in one of the computers here, probably, right? Is it, is it out for the Quest? No, well, you Quest with the tether cable. Oh, you okay. put it to the other one, yeah. Then you yeah. can play actual... Okay. okay. We just need a USB-C to see, right? That's when, that was the whole thing we were bitching about <laughs> on this very confusing, stupid thing. No, I don't think we ever did, Kev. Uh, turns out there's five stories in the road report. Number three, uh, number four, uh, CD Projekt Red is making more money off of The Witcher 3 on Steam now, thanks to you. Uh, this is a tweet. The accumulated revenue from the sales of The Witcher 3 on Steam platform for the period of time between October 1st, 2018 and today has exceeded $50 million. As a result, we are now getting 80% of any subsequent sales of The Witcher 3 on Steam. Thank you for all your support, CD Projekt Red tweeted. Oh, if that, wow. If that doesn't make sense to you, remember Steam uh, last year, or no, further out than that, two years ago, right? <laughs> changed their whole breakdown. The re- it, it reads like this. Starting from October 1st, 2018, i.e. revenues prior to that date are not included. When a game makes over $10 million on Steam, the revenue share for that application will adjust to 75%, 25% on earnings beyond $10 million. At $50 million, the revenue share will adjust to 80% slash 20% on earnings beyond $50 million. Revenue includes game packages, DLC, in-game sales, and community marketplace fees. Uh, Our hope is that this change will reward the positive network effects generated by developers of big games, further aligning their interests with Steam and the community. Because remember, 
this is all pre-Epic Game Store. Yeah. Then Epic Game Store came out like the next week and was like, yeah. fuck that. Everybody gets a better cut over here. Do you think that's going to happen for Steam? Ever? Like Steam lowers their... Because Epic is what? 12% they get? Isn't it what it was? I think it's 12%. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Uh, do you think Steam will ever lower th- lowers their lower theirs in order to compete with Epic? Or do you think I think that Epic would have to make there? up so much ground. I think the fact that Steam has... And it is 12%. The fact that Steam hasn't blinked yet, you know what I mean, in this game of chicken, I think... They don't intend to unless all of a sudden Epic does push them too far and mm-hmm. come over. You know what I mean? It seems like Epic is pushing, though. They're pushing, but it, are they making inroads? You know what I mean? Epic mm-hmm. has been literally throwing dump trucks of money at people to get their games exclusively yeah. or at least exclusive windows. And that's all well and good. And when they launched the store, there was a huge, huge out, uh, backlash from people and outcry yeah. from people being like, this is anti-consumer. I don't want this. I don't want spyware. Epic Game Store sucks. And it seems like, as you, we all predicted and expected... That has quieted down as Epic Store, Game Store has gotten better, as people have just adjusted to life, yeah. and this is how life is now. Like, I, I feel like the acquisitions have also kind of slowed down a bit. Like I haven't heard many games recently coming out exclusive on Epic Game Store. Really? Right? I think like, they're still there? there, but I think now it's just normal. It's, and it's not mm-hmm. like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this time last year, though, like people were announcing it. Like There were big announcements for it, too, right? Like I forget. Uh, Division, what did that come out on? Was that on Steam? Or is that like a... Ubisoft? Uh, yeah. Division 2 was uh, Epic Game Store. Epic Game Store? Yeah. Uh, Correct me I, if I'm wrong, you're wrong. Or maybe I'm thinking of Metro. Like, there's some. It's bi- definitely that for sure. Yeah, there are like some big name games that were going Epic exclusive, along with like a lot more indie games actually announcing. Maybe it's the thing where it has quieted down, where there are still people announcing, but maybe people just I, don't care anymore. For the record, I, I'm. I, I've seen a bunch. They are happening. Recently? I, I'm okay. doing the thing of like, they're indies and stuff. I'm struggling to be like, oh, yeah, this yeah. one. You know what I mean? Like, that I think, and I do think it, at this point is just. This is how it is. This is mm. how it works, right? I'm looking here. So, yeah, uh, I'm on GameWatcher.com, and they're updated. This Two days ago, this list got updated. It's incredibly long, but we just talked about uh, Blood Roots. Blood Roots is on there. Okay. So that's an upcoming game, yeah. right? Um, obviously, uh, Death Stranding later this year. Yeah. But again, like, I uh, guess that's, a good, actually, that's actually a good one, because I didn't remember... I didn't recall a lot of people angry about Death Stranding coming to Epic Game Store. Zombie Army 4 Dead War, our favorite oh, game of the, yeah. the, the PSN list. That was just there. Right? And the yeah. Death Stranding thing could also be like people just glad in general that it's coming to PC. But yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. I don't think people were really that angry comparatively. Well, yeah, I think everybody calmed down and just understands, okay, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. You know, we can keep bitching about it. But back to your point of does Steam ever come down and make it uniform and do all these different things. I think they only do it if they see the market share getting eaten up and they're forced by both the consumers and their partners to do it. Because, mm-hmm. again, this mo- this is, even CD Projekt Red, you know, celebrating it, as they should. But this is the move Steam wanted, right? Like, the whole argument about why this was unfair is that the be- uh, the argument would be that the better rev share should go towards the smaller creators who are you yeah. know, m- selling even fewer copies of a game. Yeah. But Steam's ar- argument obviously was with you know EA having Origin, Ubisoft having Uplay, all these different places, and now Epic Game Store coming, all these different places. He- let's keep the AAA people who yeah. sell millions and millions of copies. It's very much like a business move for them yeah. to be like, okay, yeah, guys, come sell with us, right? Which is unfortunate because I feel like indie, indie devs kind of deserve that revenue. Oh, totally. More. They need it more. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so... I kind of ho- I'm surprised actually that we haven't seen that epic push like so much that Steam has hasn't blinked right. I'm I'm surprised there hasn't been a move yet, yeah. but I could I could see a future where it becomes enough. Like I think Remember that's Remember Sweeney said move. he would stop doing exclusives if Epic matched. Oh their yeah, he thing. did Remember say that, that, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, We'll see. We'll, we'll see about see. that. We will see. Stay tuned, everybody. Uh, number five, and finally on the Roper Report today, Private Division has opened a Kerbal Space Program studio. Private Division today announced the founding of a new studio located in the greater Seattle area that is wholly focused on bringing the, to life the next generation of the Kerbal Space Program franchise, which was acquired by the publisher in 2017. I did not remember that at all. Uh, really? the, the studio includes key members of the original Kerbal Space Program 2 development team, uh, each of whom will continue their work on the sequel of the beloved space flight sim game. These skilled industry professionals have shipped multiple successful titles and will continue to lead the development of Kerbal Space Program 2, which is set to release during Take 2's fiscal year 2021, beginning April 1, 2020 to March 31, 2021. 
in the Kerbal Space Program franchise, you take charge of the space program for the alien race known as the Kerbals. You have access to an array of parts to assemble a fully functional spacecraft that flies or doesn't based on realistic aerodynamic and orbital physics. Launch your Kerbal crew into orbit and beyond while keeping them alive to explore moons and planets in the Kerbal solar system, constructing bases and space stations to expand the reach of your expedition. The original Kerbal Space Program, created with an ongoing development by Squad, released in on PC in April 2015 and has sold more than 3.5 million units worldwide. The title has been widely popular with the media and consumers alike, earning a Metacritic rating of 88 and a Steam user score of 92. Kerbal Space Program 2 is the sequel to the original game and the second in the series for the franchise. It is now being developed by Private Division and is set to release during Take 2's fiscal year 2021. Awesome. Yeah. Get him. Kerbal was always a bit too nerdy for me. And I don't yeah, mean same. like I'm too cool. I just mean like, oh man, like this is like, how do I make the rocket go? I remember watching Anthony Gallo stream it all the time. He was super yeah. into it. I think I remember watching Giant Bomb play it and be like, I don't understand what this is, but this looks cool. Yeah. And Private Division seems to have an eye for pretty cool, unique games, right? Between this and I believe they're doing Disintegration also mm. and The Outer Worlds, yeah. right? Like they have a pretty good track record of games yeah if you're you don't remember private division obviously is like the what the boutique the boutique yeah. boutique, boutique label for yeah. 2k right where it's like they're doing smaller indie games they're doing all sorts of stuff they had ancestors as yeah. well i believe kerbal was like their first actual project i don't know if they i can't remember if it was a thing where they came in after kerbal actually launched pretty and sure then they acquired did, right? it. yeah because uh, what is 2015 yeah it released in 2015 they bought they bought them in 2017, 2017. So two years later yeah but it was one of those games that people kept supporting and doing stuff with. and apparently they did ancestors the humankind odyssey which i did not realize literally just oh. said that two times. oh did you say that yeah I oh i missed either. that I what either. did i dream so <laughs> did i dream speak it <laughs> ah, thanks kevin <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it's cool to see, uh, you know, another small game like that. And again, not no longer indie technically, but, mm. uh, you know, a team that made a really cool small thing getting supported by the people and hopefully, you know, supported the right way and doubling down on what people love about it. Yeah. But Kerbal Space Program 2 is so far away, bless. Is it? If I wanted to know something <laughs> more immediate, well, I don't know. You know, it's the fiscal year 2021. I don't know when that's coming. I guess that's kind of yeah, far exactly, from right? yeah. Hey. I, I think Animal Crossing's far away. That's March 20th. What could I get in shops and mom and grops today? The official... Wait, what? <laughs> 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 the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the kind of funny games daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. yeah. Before I tell you about the games out today and new dates, let's talk about our sponsors. We'll start with Hymns. You've heard us talking about Hymns and how they're helping guys look their best. If you haven't yet... It's time to see what they're all about. 66% of men start to lose their hair by the age 35, and once you start to notice thinning hair, it can be too late. The best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something while you still have time and hair. Forhims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness, and more for men. It's time to write a new chapter, one in which you have hair. You guys already know this. Nick and Andy on the other side of the wall are using Forhims. Uh, they went to Forhims.com when they noticed their hair was thinning. They talked to a doctor. He prescribed them the medicine needed to to take care of their follicles. Thanks to science, baldness can be optional. Hims is helping guys be the best version of themselves with licensed physicians and FDA-approved products to help treat hair loss. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. These are prescription solutions backed by science. Dive into 2020 hair first right now. Our listeners can go get started with their first month for free. Go to 4 slash games daily. That's 4 slash games daily. The prescription requires an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. The offer is valid only if prescribed. It's a three-month minimum subscription. Additional restrictions apply. See the website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash games daily. Next, it's Quip. Quip, makers of the Quip electric toothbrush, want you to know there's one single discovery that matters most for your dental care. It's this. If you have good habits, you're good. That means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. Quip uses and makes Quip makes that simple, I should say. Uh, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity toothpaste. Quip's electric toothbrush has sensitive sonic vibrations and a built-in timer and 30-second pulses to guide for a full and even clean. The Quip floss dispenser comes with pre-marked string to help you use just enough. Plus, Quip delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine is always right. Uh, Jen and I just got our new brush heads and batteries. We're super stoked. 
Uh, join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash games right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash games. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash games. Quips, the good, oh no, Quip, the good habits company. Blessing. Yes. It's a Thursday, so there's a lot of stuff out today. Are you ready? I am. Out today. World of Horror is on Steam and Game Pass. Hyperlight Drifter Special Edition oh. has come to Apple TV. Under Night in Birth EXE, later Control, God, PS4 and Switch, Double Dragon, and Kunio Kun Retro Brawling Bundle, PS4 and Switch. Uh, Dread Out 2, PC. Uh, Katana Kami, A Way of the Samurai, PS4, Switch, and PC. Devil May Cry 3, Special Edition, Switch. Dreamo, PC. Sega Ages Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Switch. Autobahn Police Simulator 2, PS4. I'll believe it when I see it. They've said this yeah. before. <laughs> Townsman, A Kingdom Rebuilt, PlayStation 4. Sudoku Relax 4, Winter Snow, Switch. Blood Will Be Spilled, Switch. Lions XL, Switch. Uncharted Tides Port Royal, Switch. Vitamin Connection, Switch. Oddmar, Switch. Frederick, Switch. Uh, Sound Plan, Switch. Sega Ages, Puyo Puyo 2, Switch. Uh, new Mate, new, Num Tate, <laughs> Num Tate on PC. Tar on PC. Final Frontier on PC. Bob Wants to Go Home. Kevin, I need a trailer for Bob Wants to Go Home on PC. Glowy Jump on PC. Pathway gets a hardcore mode update. Sea of Thieves gets Cruise of Rage update as well. Oh, wow. Did you ever play it? Sea of Thieves? Yeah. I tried it. I didn't like it. Yeah? No, I couldn't. I One, I got seasick while playing. I That's how accurate it is. And that's how, that's how, how, that's that's how good the graphics are. That's how accurate the... Yeah, I get motion sickness sometimes while playing video games. Um, and yeah, Sea of Thieves is one of those games where I think the combination of it being first person and yeah. then also on the boat and having those boat physics, that messed with me. But aside from that, like overall, I played at launch and it was kind of bare bones. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't like that. It was like... You know, you couldn't really make your character, and like the, your the rewards you were getting were like cosmetics, sure. and like you could like you couldn't see your character either. And yeah, yeah. It, a lot of it, a lot of like the design decisions there didn't really make sense to me, and so I kind of bounced off of it pretty quickly. Okay. Yeah, rare though, one of my favorite developers, and so that's why that's kind of why I got you into had to it. Jump into yeah, it, I had yeah, to try yeah. it out, but it wasn't the one. Gotcha. I understand. Uh, Kevin has uh, Bob wants to go home for me. Thank you very much. Uh, this is Bob. If you're an audio listener, Bob would like to go home. This trailer is already nailing it. But Bob doesn't know the way home. If, if Bob oh, wow. is also like a little a blue guy. Yeah. Bob is a little freaked out and is moving randomly without thinking, please help Bob get home. Bob kind of looks like what I imagine Jerry, Jared Petty's like spirit animal to look like. I can see it, yeah. yeah. Please be patient with Bob. He just wants to go home. Good luck. Let's see how Bob gets home here. Oh. Bob's walking around. And, uh, we're guiding him. Oh, okay. So we control. Yeah, we're we control the little person behind Bob, and we have to like wrangle him into where we want him to go. Got it. Got it. Oh man, this looks like I would not enjoy this experience. See, I like I like it. I'm all really. About I would shit. totally I'm play this. Bob wants to go home. Shit. Yeah. This yeah. reminds me of like congratulations, <laughs> Twilight Princess, when you're like trying to um, uh, direct the cattle. Barry, you know what I mean. You know what I'm talking about. For which one? Zelda Twilight Princess, when you're trying to like direct like the sheep or whatever. Uh, no, Barry doesn't like Zelda that much. You gotta know what I'm talking about, Barrett. I'm not. I'm not responding. Oh, okay. He's mad now. Now here's the thing too. Barrett keeps telling me he's not losing weight, but then he keeps coming in looking skinnier. I, I swear I'm not. Barrett looks great I'm today. The biggest he looks I've... great. Yeah, the hat, up. You look the great. gray shirt. Yeah. I'm... Come on, walk by. Do Give a me flex, a walk man. by. Do a flex. Maybe it's the fact that you're wearing a no. Stand up straight. You were stand up straight. Up there. You go. Be my big boy. Look, look at how good he looks. Right. <laughs> look at this man. Guy. You know what I mean? You look like <laughs> cutie. Like. You know how you know the song Stacy's mom. You look like Stacy's brother, man. <laughs> Stacy's brother is <laughs> yeah. got it going on. Sit up till two a.m. playing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. I regret everything. I yeah. understand. It sucks, man. The game's good though, right? So good. Okay, right. you so just fun. you regret staying up. I got it. Okay, so tired. regret. New dates for you. Cloak and Dasher comes out on Steam early access February 25th. Hey, uh, I also have another new, uh, new date. Apex Legends uh, on their Twitter account, they tweet out, we're going back where it all started. Starting tomorrow through February 24th, in addition to World's Edge, Season 1 King's Canyon will also be available to play. Ooh. Boom. So if you like Apex and you liked that first map, it'll be available right. starting tomorrow. Well, that's breaking news for you. Good job. Uh, also, officially, everybody, it's come, it just came through and you're wrong. Randy Pitchford has announced Eli Roth is the director of the <laughs> Borderlands movie. The, the, the tweet is up. What time did that tweet happen yesterday? Like, oh, it, was it was like 11 at night. 
Because right, it just happened oh, at 1058. Oh, they just missed time. That's probably it. what happened. Is yeah. that was, they tried to schedule it for 11 a.m. I what guess I that's it when it match up. What I say. You understand what's up, man? This kid knows. This kid knows. Pound, yeah. yeah? No? Okay. Yeah? Yeah? He Come knows. On. I know. You know, yeah, I, 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 I like that Barry. Uh, deal of the day for you. Uh, free play day, days are back over on that Xbox. Uh, you can, through Sunday right now, if you're Xbox Gold, right, play Valkyria Chronicles 4, Naruto to Baruto, Shinobi Striker, oh. Shining, Res, uh, Shining, Renaz <sighs> Resonance, Reframe. Thank you. It's just, it's been a day you, already. What do you think it's been a day. Baruto is? I don't know. I thought when I read it that mm -hmm. I was being punked. <laughs> Because I was like, if, I don't know my Naruto anymore. I believe slash ever. Baruto is Naruto's son. Yep, that's 100% right. Yep. Yeah. I so then what, who is this man? I'm curious. This is the son? Naruto to Baruto? Is, Baruto is the son? No, Naruto yeah. well, is the original Naruto is the main show. character. Baruto is the new show. Yeah. So I imagine it, it follows both storylines. But yeah. Baruto is Naruto's son. Yes. He named his son like Baruto. Like if you would name your son Baruto. Bragg. 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 Yeah. Bragg. Yeah. Bragg. Yeah. <laughs> Which I kind of could see you doing because you like the. Burt Meg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh? All right, something to think about. Everybody go ahead and uh, tweet my wife. <laughs> we should name <laughs> our kid Bragg. <laughs> no context needed. She'll understand. Uh, Nanobiologist, of course, is trying to correct me. It's Naruto. No, you had it right. Naruto. 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 Yeah. Mana! You know what I mean? That's what I call them. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> sound oh, like a Pokemon cry. Show. It does sound like a Pokemon cry. You know what I'm talking about over here. You know, uh, Barrett sat down in the hot seat. Big Kev dog. So you turn up his mic because we got a reader mail question designed just for his ass. Ooh. Uh, you can write in to be well, part of reader mail, patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like Jason Doss did. Hello, guys. There are reports on the new Batman game that it is actually a reboot and drops the Arkham name from the title. Though the rumored game from WB Montreal is still going to be heavily focused on the Court of Owls, could you see WB Games splitting up the Batman brands with... You know, that, oh, that's a typo that doesn't make any sense to me. With the, them. Similar to what Activision is doing with Call of Duty. So, for example, the Arkham series could be Rocksteady, now completed, and Court of Owls series could be WB Montreal. And possibly, Rocksteady comes back with Batman Beyond series. Fingers crossed. Oh Thanks. God. Barrett. So You come in every so often... You're crying. You're you're mad about the Batman. They haven't. How many days has it been since they te teased it? Forty two days. Forty two days mm -hmm. since they teased WBS teased anything about their w Batman game. What is your read on this rumor? Because this has been around for a while now. Yeah, correct? It, it's been around for a while. Um, again, it's one of those things where I'll believe it when I see it, and it's like, it's it's been like an either or situation. Like people in the Reddit's and stuff have been talking about this for a while. Yeah. So it's one of those things that if it's true, I wouldn't be surprised and I would actually be kind of excited and it would make sense because for them to insert the court of owls into the Arkham verse would be kind of difficult because there's so much built up in that lore already in that universe. So yeah. like not to mention, um, right? Like, and this is, if you haven't read court of owls, which you should <laughs> like the whole idea is like, Gotham never was Batman's. These people have right. been there longer than he ever knew and did all the stuff. And that's such like a big event. And for that to like the the theory was before this rumor came out was that this was going to be a sequel to Origins taking place between Origins and Asylum. And it just wouldn't make sense to put that there because Court of Owls is such a huge deal that like and it, it never gets brought up. I was going to say else, as comprehensive like, as the yeah. lore is in the Rocksteady universe, they've never mentioned Court of Owls ever. Yeah. Like Batman had this like Court of Owls thing. is teased in Origins, like a very tiny tease, but that's about it. Yeah. Um. And so I think if it is a like a reboot of the Arkhamverse, like I think that'll just be like an easier way for them to integrate Court of Owls into I think the new they story. Should. I think it makes yeah. a lot of sense. I think it gets WB granted no matter what they do, they're going to be or WB Montreal, no matter what they do, is going to be compared directly to Rocksteady. Mm. But if like we've talked about before, right? Do it, change the art style, get away from the big bulky Batman, bring yeah. it down to a more humanoid Batman. What was the question about Rocksteady and like what they're doing? Uh, it was basically like, do you see that they could go what we're pitching, where WB has their own Batman series, Rock City had their Batman series, it's over, but hopefully this could maybe one day open up to Batman Beyond for them. Which would like be Rock, Rock City doing Batman? Yeah, Beyond like they have one like day? a back and forth kind of thing. That'd be awesome. If I don't see Rock City ever going back to Batman. Oh. I'm just saying oh. that now. I, I just don't see. I not to say that it won't do DC. I don't think they'll ever do a solo Batman game ever again. Yeah. Um, I think they, they had that closure, they had their trilogy, and they definitely wanted to move on from something else. Um, 
whether it's what is it nobody knows yeah, nobody will fucking yeah. tell you and, they know. Um, and so I, I mean, honestly the, rumors, the reboot quote unquote uh, for uh, this new Court of Owls game whatever it is um, asks me, actually has me thinking more likely that this might be a Batman Beyond game do you think WB Montreal game is a Batman Beyond game about Court of Owls yes um, the logo that like people have been posting pictures of like the new logo in WB Games Montreal, uh-huh. um, and it's the bat signal is super 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 similar to the Batman Beyond logo. Oh dear! So I, I think if you're gonna like reboot, like they're not like if the reboot thing is real and they're not saying like fuck the Arkhamverse entirely, we're making our own thing. If it's like a soft reboot or something, I think it would be cool to. Have it in the future. You, we've known the stories of Bruce Wayne for the years, but like he is old Bruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing bringing in Terry. Terry. Yeah, yeah. Um, that'd be awesome. And, and like capture- that is even better to get them out from underneath like what Rock City did. Yeah, I, I think and like the capture the night thing. I think would be like all of Batman's enemies coming for Bruce, and then eventually the story takes a turn. Like you have to say like Bruce is kidnapped and shit, and you have to say of course, Bruce. yeah. yeah. Huh. So. That those sounds are my dope. Thoughts. Yeah. I like that. I like those thoughts. Will it happen? Who knows? Who knows? Because they'll never re- reveal their fucking game. Don't worry. E3 2021 is right around the corner. Hashtag reveal the 2021. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to squad up. This is where one of you writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Give me your name, username, platform of choice, why you need help in a video game. I read it here. The best friends come and find you and everybody plays games together. Today, Silver Lobo needs help on PC, specifically you play. Uh, Silver Lobo's uh, you play name is Silver Lobo 21X. All one word and two one. Uh, good morning, KFGD. I am a member of the official Kind of Funny Destiny 2 PC clan that Borzin and Frankfurter created. A few of us have started playing the Division 2 and made a Kind of Funny PC clan. Clan tag, KFC. Uh, we also have been trying to get more new players uh, for the refer a friend loot. Uh, there's so many of us agents, and we could use some more members. Uh, we're all... If you want to play Division 2 on PC, <laughs> hit up Silver Lobo 21X. And when you when you put in your questions, if you could put paragraph breaks and make, write them in a notepad where you can proofread them and spell check them there. And then put them over there. If you, uh, you got there, dude. They, we get it. We there's know so, what we want. We're all no, open to just doing, a, or no, we're all open to doing just about anything as, as long, long as, as it's, it's a, a good, good time. time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> that's a live motto. That is a live motto. That is a live motto. Uh, we ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Please like and subscribe. Uh, Roostreet.com. I don't give a shit what you do there. And listening on podcast services around the globe. <laughs> Uh, Lord of Pwn writes in and says, The Borderlands art team would like to remind people that Borderlands is not cell shaded. You are correct. Just the Borderlands art style. You know what I mean? Wait, really? Cell shaded is like a very specific, like. Like, is that since Borderlands 1 it's not been cell shaded? Well, it's, I think, technically never been cell shaded. Really? Because, like, the definition of cell shading is something different. Hold on. I need, I need to pull up screenshots of Borderlands. Because I believe that for, for Borderlands 3, for sure. Borderlands 1. Hold on. Is Borderlands cell shaded? No, Borderlands is not cell shaded. Cell shading lies in the use of discrete colors to show while shading. Yeah, there's a there's a Reddit thread here. Can we stop calling the art style of Borderlands cell shading? It's not cell shaded. Note that a lot of this is ranty because it's late at night. Mm-hmm. I see people calling the art direction, and this is just from Reddit, some person on Reddit, by the way. Uh, I see people calling the art direction cell shading all the time, and it bugs me for some reason. Probably okay. because I'm a know it all, but whatever. Wind Waker was cell shaded. Mm-hmm. Torchlight has cell shading. Borderlands is a thing called Sobel. Hell, even Gearbox themselves said that Borderlands is not cell shaded, and there's a hyperlink there. I'm, I'm seeing the differences now. Cell shading, cell shading uh, lies in its use of discrete colors to show while shading. Take this picture that I pulled off Google Images as an example. Notice there are three colors used: uh, three colors used: gray, a darker gray, and a lighter gray. The cell shading lies in the use of discrete colors. Discrete meaning individually separated and distinct. The lighter gray is used. So you get it. You see what I'm saying here? 
Yeah. Well, there's a big old argument, but guess what, everybody? When I talk about Borderlands, I'm going to call it cell shaded. Fuck you. Ha ha. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's like a fun like lesson, though, because I, I wouldn't have realized that. Because, yeah, like when you look up cell shaded like, stuff, like I feel two, like you can kind of tell. I feel like we're two seconds away from winning this war, and, and now it's just going to be that's what cell shaded is. Nanobiologist that's, says it's so unique, you can just call it Borderlands style. Fine. We'll call it Borderlands style. Let's call it comic me. book. Jesus. Uh, Tim's bad haircut, great name, says you missed Ocean Horn 2 The Awakening is out on Switch today. There you go, if you wanted to pick that up, apparently. Don't forget it's on Apple Arcade, though. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a post show to do. But this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Uh, thank you all for your support. Remember, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can get the exclusive post show there. You can get the show ad-free. But more importantly, you can submit your questions, comments, concerns, your squad up requests, and so much more. Blessing, anything to say? Uh, no, not really. All right, Love good. you all. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.